So if you're new to photography and stuck at knowing what to photograph, then this is for you. Today, I'm going to share eight different photography ideas for beginners that will give you some inspiration, get you out shooting and improving your photography skills at the same time. Now, these are easy enough for beginners, but they are going to encourage you to change your camera settings and move away from auto mode, which is ultimately what you want to be able to do. Now, if you're new here, hi, my name is Audrey. I'm from Live Snap Love, where I help you master your camera so you can beautifully capture the people and the moments that matter most. And if you enjoy that video, please be sure to like it and subscribe for future videos. But for now, let's go ahead and dive in to these eight photography ideas. Perfect for beginners. So let's start with one that is easy for you to do as a beginner because it doesn't require you changing any settings on your camera. And that is to use the rule of thirds. Now the rule of thirds is a photography composition tool or guide that will help you get more interesting and dynamic images. So rather than having your subject bang smack in the center of the frame, or at least all the time, what you want to try and do is move them to the side. And we do this by mentally dividing up the frame into nine equal sections. So we're having two horizontal lines and two vertical lines, just as you can see on this image on the screen now. Now our eyes are actually naturally drawn to the points where these lines intersect. So place a point of interest where those two lines intersect. So in this example, you can see this is over her eye. You don't have to have something where the lines intersect. You can simply have your subject falling along one of those lines, whether that be the vertical line or the horizontal line. So let's move on now to our photography idea for beginner number two, and that is to blur out the background. Now, this does require taking control of your camera settings, but of course it's worth it. This is where you have the background really nice and blurred in your shot, but your subject is in sharp focus. And this helps draw our viewer's eye directly to the subject. It really helps them to kind of pop from the frame. So to do this, you're going to use aperture priority mode on your camera. Now you can use full manual mode, but because this is for beginners, let's start simply and use aperture priority mode. And you are going to choose a small F number. So something like F2.8, F3.2, even F4.0 or F5.6. And what that is going to do is give you a blurred background to your subject. Now we do have a whole video on how to get a blurred background in photography where we go through this step by step. So be sure to check that out. You'll find a link to it in the description. We do also have a aperture priority mode cheat sheet, which will really help you with this. You'll find a link to it below in the description. So idea number three is to capture a starburst. Now these are very simple to get, although they look quite impressive. All we need to do for this is to change our aperture. So again, we want to be shooting in aperture priority mode, but instead of using that small F number to get the large aperture like we did for blurring the background, we want to go all the other way and we want to close up our aperture by using a large F number. So something like F11, F14, F22. And what you need to do is find a single point of light. So this can be anything, for example, the sun is a single light source or a street light, anything along those lines, that is going to get a starburst effect by our aperture. So all you need to do is find that single point of light and use that uh, small aperture using the large F number and that point that at your lights and you will find that you get that starburst effect. So number four is to try a simple window portrait because you don't need fancy lighting gear. You don't need soft boxes and umbrellas and off camera flash units and alien bees. All you need is natural light. So if you have a window in your home, you have absolutely everything you need in order to take amazing images. Now, 
you can use window lights in lots of different ways and I would encourage you to do that as you move forward in your photography journey. But until your skills can kind of match that, the easiest way to do it is just to have your subject face toward the window. So this example here was taken in my living room, subject facing towards my living room window, and you can see that you can get a portrait where you've got beautiful creamy skin and catch lights in the eyes just by using the windows that you have in your home. So get started with that. It's a really great way to start taking portraits and just use the windows in your home as your light source. Now, number five is to change up our shooting position. And in this example, we are going to shoot from above because we can get a little bit stale when taking images. Now, when you're new to photography, you tend to stand and take your, your image from a standing point. And then as you get a little bit more advanced, you learn that you have to kind of come down to be level with your subject. But then we can get a little bit stale and take all our images from the same vantage point. So I really want to encourage you to move around your subject. Now, the one that we're going to recommend that you try and do here is shoot from above. And the reason I'm recommending that you try this is because it is a great way of minimizing any clutter that is in your home. So you don't need a backdrop. You can just shoot down and you'll find that you get rid of all the clutter, all the things that are uh, taking the eye away from your main subject in your home. It also gets great light on your subject and great catch lights in the eyes. So. Again, it's a fantastic way to use natural light to get that creamy skin and that eyes that are full of pop and sparkle. And it gives you a more interesting look to your image as well because, you know, that's not where we normally see our vantage point of the world. We're not normally looking up and shooting down. So it adds more interest to your image as well. Idea number six is to use negative space. And again, you don't need to change your camera settings for this one because it is a composition tool. So negative space is when you have an area of uh, what is known as white space around your subject. Now, that doesn't mean that the space needs to be white. It simply means that you don't have anything competing for attention in the photo. So if you use the rule of thirds, as we recommended back there in tip number one, then you can have your subject to one side and then you can have some negative space on the other side. Just look for an area that doesn't have anything competing for attention with your subject in the background. Now I have used white walls, I've used garage doors, I've used any kind of brickwork, uh, any kind of backdrop where there's maybe just trees or greenery, anything at all where there's nothing contrasting and pulling the eye away from your subject can be considered negative space. So for our penultimate idea, this is to capture motion blur. Now this is a great way to get a really interesting image and teach you about shutter speed at the same time. So motion blur is when you can actually see the motion in an image. Like this example here, you can actually see the motion of the fidget spinner, which is my son's latest obsession, just going round. And we do this by using a slow shutter speed. So you might want to switch it up and use shutter priority mode for this one and choose a slow shutter speed. Now, you'll have to experiment a little bit here with the different shutter speeds so you can get one that still shows the motion but without getting too bloody that you can't see exactly what is going on. Just make sure that you keep yourself steady and everything else in the frame steady as well so that you only see the motion from the item that is actually moving. Now the final idea I have for you is to capture a silhouette photo. Now a silhouette is when you have your subject completely black and you have the background correctly exposed like this example that you'll see now. Now how we do this is we make sure that we expose for the background rather than for our subject. And that way we get this subject completely black and we can only really see them by their outline. Now this is a little bit more advanced, so I'm not gonna cover how to do that here, but again, we have a whole other video on this, which goes through it step by step for you. So do make sure that you check that out. 
Now we do have that Aperture Priority Mode cheat sheet, which I recommend that you go and download now. This is going to help you understand more about Aperture and give you a step-by-step -step guide to shooting in Aperture Priority Mode, along with some suggested Aperture settings for different photos. So you're definitely going to want to download that. You'll find a link to it in the description underneath this video. Thank you so much for being here and for watching. Be sure to like the video and subscribe, and I will see you again next week. Bye for now.